welcome back. Today I'm going to be testing out a bunch of new luxury makeup. A lot of these products I am going to be trying for the first time, but it's not quite a full face of first impressions because there was some items that, you know, I didn't have a brand new luxury product to try. I've got all of my products laid out in front of me and we've got like Givenchy, Chanel, Hourglass, Charlotte Tilbury, Clé de Peau. Holy God, are those products expensive. <laughs> I also kind of have the look I want to create in mind just based off of the types of products I have because I have a lot of cream products and things like that. So I'm just going to go for like a very bronzy, glowy, summer kind of vibe today. It's basically going to be a very expensive, no makeup makeup look. But before we get into it, all products will be linked down below as always, but let's get started. Do you guys see the little corgi butt? Oh, he's moving. So the first product I'm going to try is this Givenchy Mr. Radiant Bronzer Healthy Glow Gel. So funny story with this product, a while ago when I placed an order on Sephora, I received my order and this was in my box. I never ordered it, they clearly like put it in mistakenly, but I was just like, okay, I don't really know what this is, but... I'll try it at some point. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but this product is a clear gel, but it's got these little like bronzy skin tone beads inside of it. So you're supposed to apply it and then I guess those little beads burst on your skin and create a nice healthy bronze glow. I guess this is a multi-use product, but most of the reviews I read said they use this as a primer. I'm gonna like apply it a little bit, I guess, and start massaging it in. Ooh, those beads are very, very brown when they burst. I can't tell if this has a scent or not. By the way, I had a friend have the same thing happen on a Sephora order a while ago and she like contacted the customer service about like the item she wasn't supposed to receive and they just told her to keep it. So don't think I'm a terrible person for keeping this and using it. <laughs> the consistency of this is nice. It just feels like a gel moisturizer. I'm feeling like it's looking pretty orange though. Holy crap, I just looked in the viewfinder and I feel like it looks worse on the camera. It seems a little bit too dark it's looking a bit orange on me but thankfully we're putting on a pretty full coverage foundation i had to go wet my sponge and i feel like now that that gel has had time to kind of sit and absorb i feel like it doesn't look so bad it's still definitely like a little bit too dark but like later in the summer when i've got a bit of self tan on i think it'll be fine so the only new high-end foundation i had is the derma blend flawless creator drops unfortunately this is way too pale for me so i can't use it today it's not really luxury anyways like derma blend is definitely high end but they don't fit into that luxury category category. So I figured I would bust out an old favorite that I haven't used in a while and that is the Hourglass Vanish Foundation Stick. I'm going to start with a little bit. I might go in with like a little bit of the darker shade that I have. This is the shade Bisque. And I'm just going to start blending this out with my sponge. I think this shade alone will be a fine match for me right now. It is quite yellow but it does a really good job of neutralizing the redness in my skin so when it's all blended out it looks pretty dang good. By the way you guys, to prep my skin today I did use like a full drunk elephant skincare routine. If you follow me on Instagram, which if you don't, you need to go follow me over there. I'm always posting on my Instagram stories and I am slowly transitioning my entire skincare routine over to Drunk Elephant because I want to do like a super thorough in-depth review on the products and tell you guys what's worth the hype what isn't. So that's definitely going to be a work in progress because I want to try out the products for like at least a full month but definitely keep an eye out for that and get excited. You guys were so excited about me doing a review on them on Instagram. Yeah, we're going full on luxury today, you guys, even down to the skincare routine. So now I'm going to go in with the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Concealer. This is the shade 2N. I'm not sure how this is going to work for me because it looks like a little bit peachy and pink. Ooh, a little bit darker than my foundation. I'm gonna bronze up quite a bit, so even if this is a little bit darker, it should be fine. I haven't actually tried any of the Laura Mercier concealers, somehow I realized, which is crazy because they are very popular, and when I was younger, like 15, 16, the Laura Mercier Silk Cream Foundation was my ride or die foundation. That's like all I wore. This concealer is definitely blending out like a dream. And it looks quite full coverage as well. I think that slightly peachy tone is actually working quite well for me because it's really neutralizing any like blue tones under my eyes. Concealer looks gorgeous, honestly. It's reminding me a lot of the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in terms of coverage, but it's like more lightweight and kind of natural looking on the skin. That's really pretty. I think the only place where I need a little bit more concealer is right here. I don't know why. I keep breaking out right in this exact spot. I'm like, what am I doing to this one spot on my face where I keep breaking out? So I'm not going to set anything yet because like I said, I have a lot of cream products to try. Actually, all of my cheek products pretty much will be creams, which is something you guys have actually requested in the past. But the next step is going to be bronzer, and this is probably the step I am most excited about, but also simultaneously the most nervous about because I picked up 
recently the Soleil Tan de Chanel Cream Bronzer. This is something I've been wanting for years. I actually redeemed my Optimum points for it. And just like having this finally is so exciting. I actually also asked you guys on Instagram, what is the best way to apply this? Because it's kind of intimidating to apply a cream bronzer. One of my subscribers, Ashley, came through and she said she likes the Real Techniques setting brush. I don't have that brush specifically, but I have this multitasking cheek brush from them, which is kind of similar. She said basically just something small but kind of fluffy so it's not going to disturb your foundation, which is what I'm most afraid of. So I'm just going to kind of swirl this in here. Oh yeah, it's picking up the product. This has got like quite a firm texture, so I wasn't really sure how a brush would pick it up. So I'm just gonna go in really lightly on my cheeks where I usually start bronzing and just like lightly kind of buff and blend that in. This is actually working really well. It's like building up the product, but it really isn't removing my foundation. So this is Chanel, so naturally it is very fragrance. It's got that classic Chanel scent. Like if you've ever tried any of their skincare, it's the same kind of smell. So hopefully it won't like irritate my skin at all. This is actually way easier to apply than I was expecting and like way less intimidating. It's actually really easy to use. I'm really just taking my time to build this up, but I'm actually really digging it so far and I'm really liking how my entire base is looking. Like I feel like that concealer and foundation complement each other really nicely. I really like that. I feel like it's going to be awesome for summer. It's got like the perfect creamy, natural, but still kind of like demi-matte finish. Like it's not shimmery at all or glowy really even. So then for blush, I've got one of these new Charlotte Tilbury Pretty Youth Glow Filter Duos. This is in the shade Seduce, and in here you get a cream blush and a cream highlight. So you guys know whenever it comes to cream or liquid blushes, I typically apply them with a stippling brush, but the pans on these are quite skinny, so I'm gonna go in with my fingers and just like see what I can accomplish. <laughs> just gonna pick up a little bit of the blush and just kind of start tapping it onto my cheeks. I don't know how so many girls do this. I feel like it just looks patchy when I apply it with my fingertips. When I see girls in like videos and stuff, and they take like a cream blush and they just like effortlessly dab it on and they have like this perfect flawless flush. I'm like, how did you just do that? Thankfully this product is on the more sheer side and it does seem to have a really nice consistency. And then I'm gonna take the highlight shade which is like a light pearly pink and just kind of do the same. I feel like this highlight is going to be very sheer. I think I like the consistency of the blush a bit better. It's cute though. I think if you're into like really easy effortless natural makeup, like you like stuff like this, you can just like throw on with your fingers and go and you like a very like soft effect, then you'll like this. So the only new high-end powder I have is this little deluxe size sample from Stellar. They're a brand that's sold on Sephora, and this is the Cosmic Face Powder. It's like a finishing powder, and it's got like the slightest little hint of lavender in it, so I think it's going to be good for brightening the under eyes. So that's what I'm going to use to set my under eyes, ensure we have no creasing. That Laura Mercier concealer is actually doing really good, considering we left it unset for a while. I like this powder. I don't know how much it's really doing for brightening. I just kind of assumed it's supposed to brighten because it does look kind of lavender, but I don't know if it's actually like supposed to or what, but it's very smooth. It definitely like locked everything in place and made my under eyes look very flawless and not cakey or powdery at all. This brand was new to Sephora a little while ago, and I believe they're actually a Canadian brand too, but I haven't tried anything from them until now, so if you guys have tried any of their products, please let me know. All right, so I'm gonna quickly go off camera, prime my lids with my standard NARS eyeshadow base, and then just do my brows like I usually do. Don't have any new bougie brow products to try today, so we're just gonna stick with my NYX, my simple affordable brows. <laughs> now that my brows are done, I'm going to quickly set my face before we move into eyes. So first I'm going to take the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder, and I'm just going to really lightly dust this over my face because I do want more of a glowy look. I don't want to completely set the face and make it super matte. So just a little bit of that, and then because today we're being bougie, and extra and luxurious. I'm going to go in with my Guerlain Meteorites. This is a product that I wanted for years, you guys. Like when I was probably like a preteen, I would see this in magazines. This is just like the original one, by the way. And I was always like, one day I'm going to own that when I'm older. And then I bought it when I worked at Sephora with my discount. And then I never use it, honestly. It doesn't do much really like it's just supposed to be kind of like a finishing powder and add just kind of like this hint of glow to your skin. But it's just totally one of those products that you like own to have out because it's a beautiful iconic product. I always have it sitting on like this little kind of cake stand I have over here. Okay, I lied. Before I do my eyes, I'm going to go in with a powder highlight because that highlight from Charlotte Tilbury was kind of sheer to start and powdering it, I feel like pretty much got rid of it. I mean, I guess there's a little bit of a glow still, but I'm going to use this Clay de Peau highlight, which, ooh, this packaging. You guys, I've had this for a sinfully long amount of time and I've never used it because I've always just felt like it was too pretty to use, which is like the stupidest thing ever. I think this might have actually been like a limited edition shade, but they do sell them regularly. So I'm gonna 
finally use this. It seems to have kind of a shimmer overlay on it. Ooh, that's like really pale and like white. A lot lighter than I was expecting. Like it's a lot more like kind of pearly and white. I guess there is like a lot of like that kind of like light pale blue and like champagne gold in it. These highlights are literally like $100 US. I think they're like 125 Canadian or something like that. It is crazy. It's pretty, but it's just like not something I could justify buying. But if you are into your clay de peau highlights, then you do you. So for my eyes, I'm going to be using this Laura Mercier Intense Clays palette. I believe this is from their Bohème Chic collection that is out for summer. And this is so pretty. Like, I opened it, I was like, oh, that's kind of surprising, but I really like it. The palette also has a setting powder in it. I'm a little bit confused by the names because it says this shade is called Metallic Rust. These shades on the bottom don't look that metallic at all, but like I said, I'm just gonna do like a really quick kind of no makeup makeup look. I swatched these shadows and this bottom row was like quite sheer and buildable. And then these colors, I'll swatch them for you guys in a sec. They are insanely pigmented. They are Laura Mercier's like clay formulation. So they feel like clay, like a creamy clay and they just have pigment for days, you guys. Just gonna throw that on the lower lash line quickly as well. Okay, we're gonna swatch these guys for you and just like be ready, be prepared. Are you guys ready for this? Just watch. I kind of messed up on that top one, but like, holy crap. And these, like I said, there's pigment for days. They're the kind of swatches where you can like really blend them out and just really make the color go so far and I like barely touch them so I think I am going to take that middle kind of pinky metallic shade and just apply that with my fingers to my lids. I don't think a brush will really do these shadows justice because they do have that kind of creamy texture. I don't think a brush will really be able to pick them up very well. Oh that shade you guys. It's like such a me eyeshadow. <laughs> I'm just gonna blend that out. I'm gonna try and take this pearly shade here and just use this to highlight my inner corners and my brow bone. So I'm gonna quickly curl my eyelashes and the mascara I'm going to try today is the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Major Volume Mascara. I'm gonna be 100% honest. I don't really think I'm just cleaning off my eyelashes curler. I don't really think I'm gonna love this mascara. Maybe I just don't like new mascaras because I have like the worst attitude whenever I try a new one. <laughs> you know, looking at my face up close like this, I do kind of see the effects of the Guerlain meteorites, but I have to be so close. But I can see like a little nice fine all over shimmer. What do you guys think? Do you think it did anything for me? I really don't think it does much, but kind of just one of those products. That mascara actually looks way better on my lashes than I was expecting. I don't hate it. Kind of digging it actually. I just thought I was gonna put like way too much product on my lashes and be kind of goopy and clumpy. That's like what I always expect from like volumizing mascaras with this style of wand. But I'm pleasantly surprised. I do know a ton of people who love this mascara though, so I shouldn't be that surprised, honestly. I think this is actually the first Marc Jacobs mascara I've tried. I'm honestly having like the opposite problem. Like I'm finding I really have to work to coat my lashes. I think that's just because the bristles on the wand are so short and it is definitely a drier formula in my opinion. That's actually so pretty. I like it, you guys. I think I just found a great new mascara and it seems to be holding the curl really well so far too. The Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir mascara definitely gets my very picky and particular seal of approval. So for lips, the only high-end lipstick I have at the moment that I haven't tried is this Elizabeth Arden Plush Up Lipstick. I don't know if you guys can remember, but I couldn't figure out how to open this. It like slides out. And this is in the shade Babe Kiss number 10. And if I remember correctly, this is kind of sheer, so I think it'll go with the more natural kind of vibe we're going. I could also use a Clay de Peau lipstick that I've already used. I'm gonna try this on though and see. Well, it's not quite as sheer as I was expecting. That's a lot more pigmented than I remembered. It's got a really nice formula too. It's very creamy. It's a little bit more rosy than I'm wanting. Like it's got kind of a brown tone to it that I feel like is making the look a little bit heavy, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna try the Clay de Peau lipstick. So this is the Clay de Peau Rouge Liquid Eclat in shade number 11. I've talked about this before on my channel like a really long time ago, but I do love this lipstick. It's like a glossy, pretty opaque liquid lipstick. This is definitely more what I'm going for. I really wanted a nice glossy lip. Yeah, I feel like that definitely just goes with like the overall vibe of the look and especially the eyes with like that pink tone. So this is the finished look, you guys. I feel like this is one of the most successful like first impression, full face first impression videos I've ever done because there was literally nothing that I hated, nothing that went horribly awry, and I'm actually a huge fan of the final results, which I would hope for given the price tag of these products. But I want you guys to comment down below and let me know do you think this looks like a $700 face? 
would you spend this amount of money for this makeup look? You can be honest. Like, I think it's a really pretty look. Is it worth that much money? Does it look like super high end? I don't know, I could definitely achieve something similar with affordable products, but like, definitely some huge gems in this video and I feel like my base looks really pretty like I have to say my skin looks really flawless so just a little recap and some final thoughts the products that I had already used before filming this video like the Charlotte Tilbury powder hourglass foundation and the clay to pole lipstick I love all three of these they're definitely products I would recommend the new discoveries from this video that I think are fantastic and worth checking out the Chanel bronzer Yes, worth the price tag. Honestly, you guys, I'm going to use that a ton. I already know. The Marc Jacobs Mascara, too. I love this. I really like the Stellar Powder as well. I think it looks beautiful under the eyes. I'm going to have to try it out more. And the Laura Mercier Concealer. I think all of these products look beautiful on my skin. A little bit unsure on this guy here. Like, my makeup looks good, but, like, I don't know if it's something I would personally go out and buy. I think the Charlotte Tilbury Duo is, like, a little bit too sheer for my liking, but it's going to come down to personal preference. Like, I think if you're someone, once again, who likes super minimal makeup, like you even will like throw on cheek products with no foundation then that might be a good option once again I think this video was a success I'm loving my makeup today I hope you guys have enjoyed this video as well seeing me test out some luxury makeup goodies give it a thumbs up if you did don't forget to check out the description bar for links to all of these products go follow me on Twitter and Instagram I'm at Sarah on both and hit that subscribe button down below if you're new to my channel as always, thank you so much for spending this time with me today. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.